my name is Kira Kempinska. Uh, I work at EY in the AI Intelligence Build Center in Wrocław, and I also lecture at UCL part-time. So this uh, presentation is actually a joint work with my colleague from UCL, Roberto Murcio. Um, and it will be, as I mentioned, about using deep generative models to model uh, urban networks with the purpose on, of understanding urban complexity. Uh, so, you know, we all live in the cities, and despite them being very great, there are so many problems at the moment. Like, we have problems with pollution, with traffic, with social isolation, we have a lot of crime. And, you know, you think that's really absurd, because, you know, scientists have been working on, on designing cities for, like, literally thousands of years. And despite that progress in research, there is not much progress in how in the quality of living in cities. Actually, it's going downhill, so it's actually getting worse in many of these metrics. Uh, so, you know, you might want to uh, question why, why that's the case. And one of the reasons that I think is the root cause is the fact that urban scientists tend to oversimplify urban complexity. So they try to, you know, have a very simple model to say uh, everything about cities, even though, you know, everyone, as we know, cities are very complex phenomena. So this is a nice example of a very popular urban uh, development model by Cedric Price from... 1930s, uh, who's an um, architect by, uh, by training, and he basically said that, you know, we can just say that cities uh, can be boiled down to three, actually boiled down to three types of eggs. Uh, if we think about ancient cities from like, you know, uh, um, ancient times, we can basically say they're a boiled egg because, you know, there was a very important city center with all the power, or all the military, and then it usually had like defensive walls around, so the city was very much constrained to that boiled egg space. Uh, but then, as you know, cities developed, industries developed, uh, more people uh, were attracted to cities. They started to, you know, resemble a bit of a poached egg. So, so you still had this very important city center, but uh, the boundaries were not that well defined anymore. They were a bit uh, fuzzy. But, you know, th this model kind of breaks when you think about modern cities. He said modern cities are like scrambled eggs, but what does it actually mean? Uh, when we have, like, you know, cars and all the improvements in human mobility, People start to, uh, you know, kind of live on the suburbs more, shop in the suburbs, maybe go shopping uh, near a major road instead of going to the center every time. Uh, so modern cities, of course, there are loads of exceptions, uh, try to be a bit more scrambled and difficult to describe. And this is kind of why, why modern cities have so many problems, because we don't really understand how they function, how they grow. It's very organic, by how, but also very hard to measure. So just to show you how a few examples of of scrambled eggs uh, that we analyze in this, in this research project. So, you know, if you think about cities in, in the US, very well structured, kind of rectangular, but then if you look at Japan, much more dense, again, uh, very structured. Uh, <laughs> Qatar, completely different uh, structure, uh, different continent. And, you know, if you think about Europe, uh, for example, London, then you see the old kind of European cities having a much more a uh, rich structure with, you know, some old city center kind of mixed with new buildings and new streets and the street layouts are, are very interesting. Oh, <laughs> I'm back again. What's going on? Uh, so, you know, we can see that the, uh, the scrambled egg model doesn't capture that richness and the diversity of modern cities. So what we thought that we could do was uh, to just use deep learning and especially deep generative models to try to tackle that problem. And uh, as you know, deep generative models are quite good at, at learning and imitating data, so they can also imitate perhaps uh, urban <laughs> forms. And uh, if, uh, by in the process of tr learning to imitate data, they kind of learn the important features of the data set, so they kind of learn the essence of what's important. So uh, we're hoping that in the uh, case of cities, they would capture the essence of what makes them look like they look like and, uh, and you know, have some kind of uh, fixed state, um, feature space that would describe their complexity. And that intuition follows uh, a famous quote from Richard Feynman, who said that if you cannot create uh, something, you don't understand it. So if we can recreate cities, create some uh, realistic images of, of synthetic cities, then perhaps we learn something about their structure. Uh, and uh, uh, we do that, but you know, because as you know, deep neural nets have much fewer parameters than data points that we train them on, so they kind of forced to learn something important in that data. And to make this uh, more concrete, in our case, we had 
uh, cities, and um, we started, of course, you could think about different uh, ways of representing cities. In our project, we just thought about the street networks because they, they're shown to be quite reflective of urban density, urban forms, a lot of urban phenomena, and they're quite simple to, to look at as well. And um, we decided to... to yeah. If we uh, just uh, added a few more clusters, you can see that uh, you can pick up some more interesting patterns, so not only the density, but also the spatial configuration, or we had one cluster that seemed to group disconnected road, uh, roads. Um, so again, uh, quite, uh, you get to more detail if you, if you analyze it further, but it uh, looks plausible. <laughs> um, and finally, the most fun bit, uh, since we have the latent space, we can just randomly generate new cities. And uh, this is uh, some samples from the neural network. Of course, they're not as good of a quality as reconstructions of the training data, because here we're just, you know, synthetically trying to generalize and, and create, interpolate to new cities. But again, you can see that the overall structure is picked up, and uh, we should do a bit more to, to figure out how to, to learn the, you know, the dense uh, network segments. Um, so this is, again, this could do with, with slightly different training approach. Uh, VAEs tend to lead to blurred images, which is a known fact, uh, but also the size of the data set was, uh, was quite limited, so we could also work on that further. And um, as I said, the, the latent space is quite interesting, but uh, uh, hard to interpret uh, in, in the case of standard VEs, so my colleagues at UCL actually extended that work a bit and applied a standard PCA to decompose latent space into uncorrelated uh, factors and also ordered them according to their importance. And uh, you can see some interesting trends emerge. Uh, for example, in this plot, uh, you can see some uh, PCA components corresponding to spatial density, but also uh, global and local structure of that, neural net, uh, of that street networks. Um, and uh, for, if you, for example, look at the first component uh, and plot it for London, you can see that it, it nicely corresponds to um, mainly road intensity, and, and you can see that spatially it, it makes sense as well. Um, so, uh, again, further work could be done uh, to look at other ways of disentangling the latent representation. This is a, a very basic approach and that is already showing some interesting signals. Um, and so, uh, this work was uh, very preliminary and it raised a lot of interesting questions. Uh, the, the two most important in my uh, understanding are how, ca how can we improve the quality of the generated street networks? Um, as you could see, they're quite blurred, so we could try different training regimes, we could try uh, bigger data sets, but we could also try to encode the street networks in a different manner. So, at the moment, we were basically encoding images, but, you know, street networks are just graphs, so why don't we use graph embedding te techniques? And there are some very interesting papers that have come out recently that look at graph embeddings, but also specifically spatial graph embeddings. So, how can we efficiently add the spatial information as, as features to those um, like graph nodes and embed them um, uh, so that the spatial information is preserved. And uh, another uh, interesting work that is happening widely in the neural network um, uh, world is also about disentangled representation learning. So PCA is good at, at creating uncorrelated uh, latent representations, but sometimes uncorrelated is not what you want. Sometimes you actually want to go for even slightly correlated features, but those that you can actually interpret as corresponding to some generative factors. So, for example, Google um, a few months ago released a nice library for disentangled representation learning, and for, you can see on, on their toy data set that it can pick up nicely different generative factors, like you know the size of an object, the background color, etc. And even though these uh, attributes might be sometimes correlated in your data set, they correspond nicely to uh, human interpretable features. And um, future work, uh, we would like to also try to do that and see whether we can actually come back to the urban morphologists and tell them, oh, actually our latent features correspond to these known metrics, like you know, uh, network uh, connectedness or, or degree, etc. There are a lot of uh, kind of standard uh, network metrics that uh, people have come up with. So it would be nice to compare them against those uh, learned in an unsupervised way. Um, so this is it, thank you very much. There is a GitHub repo with all the code and, uh, and there is also going to be a publication of that paper very soon. You can already see that on archive. And yeah, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, here. Yeah.
capturing the minor roads, which is great. But if the minor roads get too dense, then you just get like a blurred uh, patch, which is um, one uh, to one extent due to like a limited data sample, but it's also due to the fact that VAEs are not very well designed for uh, for working with such small like narrow patches and um, and tend to be as a result these patches tend to be a bit blurred. So that's also something to do with the design of the of the of the training. Um, so um, this is the reconstruction quality. Uh, because we, we learned to map all images to a 32-dimensional latent space, we could use that space to make some nice comparisons between urban forms. So a very basic one would be just to measure distances between these latent vectors. At the top, you can see the actual um, some urban forms that we picked from our data set. And then uh, we just ordered the four closest forms from, from the data set, and you can see it's, again, like visually, it's doing a good job, so it's capturing some important uh, network metrics, like definitely the network density, but also something about the spatial, spatial density, so not only the overall, but also how the street network is, is, uh, is spread out in space. Another nice, uh, another basic thing you can do with the latent space, you can do some basic clustering, so uh, we decided to just run k-means, why not? <laughs> And uh, we, um, we found out that three clusters um, match the data the best. So we have like one cluster that looks very much like high dense, you know, Japanese, US uh, road networks. Then you have a, a cluster in between of like slightly less dense and, and the most sparse on the right. So you can kind of intuitively say that, and also looking at the pixel intensity, uh, the uh, k-means picked up mainly the, uh, the uh, urban density which is you know, probably the most important feature, but uh, it would be nice to explore a bit more. Uh, so if we, for example, uh, increase the number of clusters, oh, sorry, that's uh, three clusters mapped. So again, you can see high-dense clusters in California, Japan, the red dots. Uh, blue are the ones in the middle, and then black are the, the sparse networks. You can see most of them in, in uh, Southeast Asia. If we uh, just uh, added a few more clusters, you can see that uh, you can pick up some more interesting patterns, so not only the density, but also the spatial configuration, or we had one cluster that seemed to group disconnected road, uh, roads. Um, so again, uh, quite, uh, you get to more detail if you, if you analyze it further, but it uh, looks plausible. <laughs> um, and finally, the most fun bit, uh, since we have the latent space, we can just randomly generate new cities. And uh, this is uh, some samples from the neural network. Of course, they're not as good of a quality as reconstructions of the training data, because here we're just you know, synthetically trying to generalize and, and create, interpolate to new cities. But again, you can see that the overall structure is picked up, and uh, we should do a bit more to, to figure out how to, to learn the, you know, the dense uh, network segments. Um, so this is, again, this could do with, with slightly different training approach. Uh, VAEs tend to lead to blurred images, which is a known fact. Uh, but also the size of the data set was, uh, was quite limited, so we could also work on that further. And um, as I said, the, uh, the latent space is quite interesting, but uh, uh, hard to interpret uh, in, in the case of standard VEs. So my colleagues at UCL actually extended that work a bit and applied a standard PCA to decompose latent space into uncorrelated uh, factors and also ordered them according to their importance. And uh, you can see some interesting trends emerge uh, for example, in this plot, uh, you can see some uh, PCA components corresponding to spatial density, but also uh, global and local structure of that, neural net, uh, of that street networks. Um, and uh, for, if you, for example, look at the first component uh, and plot it for London, you can see that it, it nicely corresponds to um, mainly road intensity, and, and you can see that spatially it, it makes sense as well. Um, so, uh, again, further work could be done uh, to look at other ways of disentangling the latent representation. This is a, a very basic approach that is already showing some interesting signals. Um, and so uh, this work was uh, very preliminary and it raised a lot of interesting questions. Uh, the, the two most important in my uh, understanding are how, ca how can we improve the quality of the generated street networks? Um, as you could see, they're quite blurred, so we could try different training regimes, we could try uh, bigger data sets, but we could also try to encode the street networks in a different manner. So 
At the moment, we were basically encoding images, but you know, street networks are just graphs, so why don't we use graph embedding te techniques? And there are some very interesting papers that have come out recently that look at graph embeddings, but also specifically spatial graph embeddings. So how can we efficiently add the spatial information as, as features to those um, graph nodes and embed them um, uh, so that the spatial information is preserved? And uh, another uh, interesting work that is happening uh, widely in the neural network um, uh, world is also about disentangled representation learning. So PCA is good at, at creating uncorrelated uh, latent representations, but sometimes uncorrelated is not what you want. Sometimes you actually want to go for even slightly correlated features, but those that you can actually interpret as corresponding to some generative factors. So, for example, Google um, a few months ago released a nice library for disentangled representation learning, and for, you can see on, on their toy data set that it can pick up nicely different generative factors, like you know, the size of an object, the background color, etc. And even though these uh, attributes might be sometimes correlated in your data set, they correspond nicely to uh, human interpretable features. And um, future work, uh, we would like to also try to do that and see whether we can actually come back to the urban morphologists and tell them, oh, actually our latent features correspond to these known metrics, like you know, uh, network uh, connectedness or, or degree, etc. There are a lot of uh, kind of standard uh, network metrics that uh, people have come up with. So it would be nice to compare them against those uh, learned in an unsupervised way. Um, so this is it, thank you very much. There is a GitHub repo with all the code and, uh, and there is also going to be a publication of that paper very soon. You can already see that on archive. And yeah, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, here. Yeah.